Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's try an example out here. All right. And we will say, um, okay, um, uh, a study last year reported that, I don't know, 25% of, not 0.25, We'll say that point that a quarter of the people of uh, people in California, I don't know, felt like sales tax was too high. <laughs> I'm just making these numbers up here. Okay, <laughs> I have no idea who. Uh, Okay, uh, and we'll say, you know, um, researchers wanted to know if that percentage or that proportion has increased. Okay, so they uh, surveyed. Um, 200 randomly selected California residents. Okay, and we will say 20.28 of those surveyed felt like sales tax uh, was too high. Okay. Um, does the survey results or do the survey results Do the survey results um, provide evidence that the proportion has increased from last year? Okay. Does this question make sense? All right, so um, let's see if we can do this. Um, see if you can come up with the hypotheses. So uh, we'll do this one, one step at a time. So I'll give you guys a moment here to see if you can come up with the hypotheses that would be appropriate to use for this hypothesis test. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video here. And I'll give you guys a... Uh, uh, a minute or so to think about this. See if you can think of the hypothesis for um, for this test. All right. Well, let's think about this. Okay. So the question here is asking: Do the survey results provide evidence that the proportion has increased from last year? Okay. So last year, what did we find? We found that a quarter, or 0.25, of people in California felt like the sales tax was too high. Okay, so last year that number was 0.25. We want to okay. They they did a survey again this year. They want to know okay. Well, has that number changed? All right. When they did the survey this year, we they got 28 percent. Is that is that higher? Does that mean the population's higher? This is what we want to know. Okay. So essentially, our null hypothesis is going to be basically that the proportion has not increased from last year, okay? So remember, what we always have to do is we always need to have an equal sign in our null hypothesis. What we're talking about in this problem is the proportion of people who think sales tax is too high. So P is, uh, you know, the proportion of people in California 
who think sales tax is too high. All right, and so what we have is we've got P equal, and we want to know, so the question here is kind of the, the thing that says, you know, do the survey results provide evidence that the proportion has increased from last year? Okay, basically, this kind of gives us an idea of what our hypotheses should be. So the null hypothesis is that it has not increased from last year, so that the proportion of people who think the sales tax is too high is still 0.25. And then the alternative will then be what? Is greater than 0.25, okay? So the key, you know, when, when coming up with a hypothesis, remember, okay, um, we always use P and never P hat in the hypotheses, okay? Okay. And then whatever number you have in the null hypothesis, it will be always the same number in the alternative. Yes, so, question. Uh, do we only, uh, when we first start off with the hypothesis that we want, do we put the observed one first? Uh, so you, you don't put uh, observed values into here, OK? Well, um, well observed is that it's, not, it's, it's lower, so is that why you put it first? No, um, we're, we're using, so what we're, what we're basing our hypotheses off is this question here. Do the survey results provide evidence that the proportion has increased from last year? Okay. So generally, we're, this is kind of like, do the survey results or do our data provide evidence? And generally, kind of this part over here, that the proportion has increased from last year, this gives us an idea of what our alternative should be. Okay. So... Does our study provide evidence of blah, 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 blah? That blah, blah, blah part is generally something along the lines of the alternative hypothesis. So in that case, has the proportion changed or increased from last year? We're going to have P is greater than 0.25. So we always use P and never P hat. Um, null hypothesis always has equal sign, OK? And the, um, the alternative will use the same number that exists in the null. Okay. Does this our creation of our hypotheses okay? All right. Let's um, our preparation here involves uh, picking our alpha, okay? Uh, you've got to figure out your p hat, figure out your n, and figure out your p0, okay? So I'll give you a moment here. Yeah, this should be fairly easy to, uh, to fill out, but uh, just take a moment here to, uh, to put in the numbers you need for alpha, p hat, n, and p0. These are these are kind of the values you want to identify. OK, so uh, the problem doesn't mention significance level. It doesn't say anything about alpha. So what is the alpha that we should use? 0 0.05, great. OK, p hat is our sample proportion. So what is the proportion we observed in our sample? 0.28, right? This is, this is the proportion that we got from our sample. Now, in this case, uh, we were given this number, 0.28. Other times, you might have to do some division, right? It might say uh, 50 people or, you know, 50 whatever. 56 people said uh, they felt this, okay? Then you would do some division. No problem, okay. What is N, our sample size? 200, okay. And what is P0? 0. 0.25. Great, okay. So once you have all of these parts labeled, then uh, part three should be easy. Part three is our calculations. Okay, so what you want to figure out is your standard error. P0. 
times 1 minus P0 over N. You want to get your Z score, which is going to be P hat minus P0 over your standard error. And then you want to get your P value. Okay, so what well, you should be able to do uh, the standard error and Z, and then we'll talk about um, the P value together. So go ahead and take a Take a minute here to get those values. Okay, how are we doing? So yeah, once once we have all of our um, parts labeled, it's not so bad, right? Or is it? I don't know. So I, you know, the step two of preparation, where you label um, what values you have, uh, I think it's I think it's pretty. Pretty important. I'm going to just move slide things around so I have more space to write things. Okay, so what do we get for our standard error? We're going to put in 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25 divided by 200. Okay, so I go 0.25 times uh, 1 minus 0.25 divided by 200, and then I take the square root of that value, and I get 0 0.030618. So, so far so good? Okay, so my z-score, what do I have? 0.28 minus 0.25 divided by 0 0.030618. Okay, so I'm going to have 0.28 minus 0.25, and uh, you know if I have, if you have one of these calculators, what I like to do is I just hit divide by the answer key, so I don't have to type in that whole number, okay? Because I'm lazy like that, and I got 0.98, okay? So my z-score is 0 0.98. So far, so good, or am I losing people here? Do which which part again? Um, all, of all of it, sure, sure. Okay, are you are we okay with the labels of all of these pieces? That p hat is 0.28, n is 200, and p0 is 0 0.25. We're okay there. Okay, so all I've done for the standard errors, I've just plugged in. So it says p0 is 0 0.25. So I've just plugged in 0 0.25 wherever I see p0, and I put in 200 so right here. So I have this. Okay. So on my calculator, what kind of calculator you got? The same. All right. So what I'm going to type is 0.25 times parentheses 1 minus 0.25 close parentheses. Huh? Where is that coming from? Uh, uh, okay. Here. All right. You can. Uh, can you see my cursor here? I'll do 0.25 times parentheses button here. 1 minus 0.25. I'm going to hit this close parentheses button, divided by 200, okay? So this is, I'm just entering what's inside the square root. I have, I have all of this. Uh, but I need to take the square root of that, so I'm going to hit the square root button. And instead of retyping all of this, I'm going to hit the answer button. And then I hit equals. And that gives me this value right here. This is not our Z. This is our standard error, okay? And then to get my Z... I'm going to do point, I've just plugged in, again, values from over here into here. So I have 0 0.28 minus 0 0.25 divided by the standard error, which is this thing. Okay, so I just want to make sure you're okay there. So I'm going to, I'm going to type in parentheses, and I'm going to do 0 0.28 minus 0 0.25, close off the parentheses, and I'm going to hit divide. And I could type in 0 0.030618. For me, it's easier just to hit the answer button because I already have 0 0.030618 showing up in my current answer field. So I hit that, and I hit equals, and I get 0 0.97979 whatever. So I'm going to just round that to 0 0.98. Oh, yeah, the parentheses are very important, okay? Because this calculator follows order of operations, and so it's going to do all the division unless you say, hey, Parentheses here, do the addition or subtraction first. 
Okay, so uh, we've got this. Um, so, you know, our little uh, picture looks something like this. You know, every time we take a sample, we're expecting something around 25%. What we got was 28%, and we want to know, uh, has it increased from last year? Okay, so that means we want to know, is that value 28% or anything higher than 28%? So we want to get the area over here. So I look up 0 0.98, and what do I do? I'm going to take the area to the right, yeah? So... When I look up 0 0.98, uh, where's my uh, Z table? Okay, so I look up 0 0.98, 0 0.98 is 0 0.8365. Yeah, okay. So that means I have over here 0 0.8365, which means over here I'm going to have 1 minus 0 0.8365. Okay, so I do 1 minus 0.8365, so my p-value is 0.1635. Yes? Yeah, okay, so that's a good question. Well, uh, um, let me finish this problem, and then I'll answer that question about whether we take the area to the left or the area to the right. Or, uh, and in fact, there's this side time where you take area on both sides. So uh, I'll get there. Okay. All right. But are we okay? You know, let's just say we understand this part where we're taking the area to the right. Or I told you we're taking the area to the right. We're getting a p-value of 16% here. Question. So I looked up z equal to 0 0.98 in the z table. So you go to your normal distribution table, z is 0.98, you get 0.8365. We want the area to the right, so we do 1 minus 0.8365, and we get 0.1635. Yes? So if it said less, then we would just left it at 0.8365? Yes, if it said less, we would take the 0.8365. Okay, so we're, we're um, are we, is there a question about alpha back there? Yeah, the yeah, point? Did it again? Do, do it again? Where did we get alpha again? So, so sometimes this problem statement will say use a significance level or use alpha equal to 10%. Or two percent, or whatever it might be. It might even say five percent. Okay. And if that's the case, you use that value for alpha. If the problem doesn't say anything about alpha, then the default is just to use five percent. Okay. So if the problem doesn't tell you what alpha to use, then you just assume that alpha is going to be five percent. Okay. So where do where do we use alpha? Yeah, we use it right now in this step, okay? So we've got our p-value to be 0.1635, and our alpha is 0 0.05. Okay, so continuing on, so our step four is our um, uh, interpretation, conclusion, and interpretation. Okay, so my p-value, 0.1635, my alpha, 0 0.05. So my p-value is greater than alpha. So what does this mean? That we do not reject. Yeah, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay? What, what did our null hypothesis state? Yeah, so our null hypothesis said the uh, proportion of people who think the sales tax is too high that the proportion is still 0.25, same as last year. Okay, so what this says is that, you know, um, our sample does not provide evidence that... Um, 
the proportion of people who think sales tax is too high So our sample does not provide evidence that the proportion has increased from last year. So I'll let you guys copy that down. Uh, and I, I just kind of want to have us think about this for a second, okay? So what has happened is that we wanted to know, has that proportion increased from last year? Okay. Last year, the proportion was established, 25% of people think the sales tax is too high. We went out and we conducted a survey. When we conducted the survey, 28% thought it was too high. Okay. Now, if we were in junior high school or something, we would say, hey, 28%, 25%, 28 is bigger, it's increased. Okay. But with statistics, there's a little bit more nuance here. We're saying, hey, Anytime we go out and take a random sample, I can't expect to get exactly 25%, okay? So I got 28% this time. Is that within the range of what could happen just from kind of fluctuations from one sample to another? Or does this actually mean the proportion has changed? Um, what the results of our um, hypothesis tests say is that you know what, this is still within the um, zone of kind of fluctuations from one sample to another. So 28%, it is higher than 25%, but it does not provide evidence that the proportion has changed. Okay, so even though our data might look like it has increased based on kind of our understanding of sampling distributions, and just we know how every time we take a random sample, it's not necessarily going to be the same. What this says is that 28% is not necessarily that different from 25%. Okay? Now, if we took a much bigger sample, if we took surveyed 2,000 people rather than 200 people, and we got 28%, then probably what would happen is we would see that that a change, um, that 3% that percentage point change is now significant, okay? But when you've only surveyed 200 people and the proportion is now 28%, it's not enough to convince us that it's changed, okay? At the same time, it doesn't, it's not, so what we're saying is that it does not provide evidence that the proportion has increased, okay? But it, we cannot say that this provides evidence that the proportion has stayed the same. Does that make sense? So even though, because it's 28, our sample was 28%, it's not evidence to say that the entire proportion in the state of California is different from 25%. But at the same time, it does not tell us that it has remained the same either. Okay, all we're saying is that we didn't gather enough data to really say anything significant. Does that feel okay? <laughs> huh? No? Should I, I don't know if what the answer is. Should I write more of this down? Or, um, yeah? No, not really. Okay. Um, or am I just kind of saying all of this too fast? I don't know what, what's going on. Yeah? Can we do the same exact numbers? Yeah, we can do the exact, you want the exact same question with different numbers? No, different, different question with different numbers? <laughs> okay, I got I to gotta time out, um, figure out the, the timing here. Okay, well, I, okay, I'll, I'll write a few more things down. Um, just kind of, so our sample does not provide evidence that the proportion of people who think the sales tax is too high has increased. So I'm going to just kind of put this in parentheses saying like you can kind of skip it. So our sample does not provide evidence that the proportion has increased from last year, okay? So let's just, you know, kind of just think. All right, food for thought. So what we have is last year, the proportion 
was 0.25, okay? This year, we don't know the proportion, right? So we took a sample. We took a sample this year, and our sample has a proportion Point two eight, and the question is, the fact that this is point two eight, does that mean the entire population has shifted from point two five to something higher? That's what we were asking. Okay, so our sample is higher than point two five, but does that mean the population has a proportion higher than point two five? Okay, our sample has uh, a proportion higher than 2.25. Does that mean the population proportion has shifted also? That's that's what we want. That's what we're asking. So this is kind of, you know, in statistics, we're saying every time we take samples out of the population, we're not necessarily going to get the exact same thing. Okay? And so there's we have variation from sample to sample that's kind of like reasonable. And then we have, and if we see anything that's outside of that reasonable variation, then then it means something weird is going on, right? So so basically, we're asking, when I get 28% and I'm comparing that to 25%, is this difference, is this like winning only three games when I'm expecting to win five, or is this like winning only 60 games when I'm expecting to win 100? Okay, right, we were talking about, because you had the gut reaction that said, winning three games when you're expecting to win five, not a big deal. But when you're winning six, only 60 games when you're expecting to win 100, that's kind of a, that's a big deal, okay? We're asking the same question. I got 0.28 versus 0.25. Is this not a big deal? Is it a big deal? When we've done the math, it turns out it's not a big deal. Okay? So the math says, you know, 0.28 versus 0.25, not a big deal. Okay, and the reason why we know it's not a big deal is because our p-value is greater than alpha. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, then that means it's a big deal. That means we have evidence that things have changed. Okay, that, well that's it, okay? Your, uh, your p-value is either gonna be bigger than alpha or it's gonna be less than alpha. If the p-value is bigger than alpha, you don't have evidence that things have changed. If the p-value is less than alpha, we have evidence that things are different. Okay, are we feeling okay? I hope so, all right? And you know, the first time you're exposed to this, it's terrible, okay? I get it. You're sitting there and you're just like, oh gosh, what is this? And then I'm gonna do some more stuff here and it's gonna be like, oh my, you know? It's it's okay. It's kind of just like, you know, the first time you got behind the wheel and you had to drive, it was probably an intimidating experience, okay? And now you can drive and you'll get home and you'll be like, oh, I wasn't even paying attention and somehow I got home, right? Like certain things become, with, with experience, like, it becomes second nature, you know. I've done this so 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 many times that it's like, you know, my brain doesn't even have to do any thinking. But of course, you know, it's the first time you guys are seeing it, so it's it feels a little terrible. Yeah, question. Sorry, so you said if the p-value is greater, you don't have evidence, and if it's less, then you do have evidence. Yes, that is correct. Yes. So this is when you, yeah, well, always we have to collect some kind of data to make some kind of statement, right? So we've collected data, 
And what we're using, what we're asking is, does this data indicate, like, can I, can I then make a conclusion for or against some kind of claim? Okay. So in this case, you know, the claim was that the proportion is still 0.25, um, or, you know, that the proportion of win is less than 50% win rate or something like that. Okay, so I, I, I have to get to the, these next topics here, otherwise, otherwise we'll be in trouble. Okay, so, uh, all right, so what area do we use to get our p-value? Okay, so this is, you know, in part three, you get your z-score, right? So you get a z-score. And then we have to, so we take the z-score, look it up in the table, uh, to get our p-value. All right, so this is how it works. So everything depends on the alternative hypothesis. If the alternative has a less than sign, your p-value is equal to the area to the left of the z-score. Okay? So if the, if the alternative has a less than, okay, meaning it's kind of, you can kind of think of this as an arrowhead pointing to the left, Take the area to the left, okay? So the picture, you know, if your z is, let's say, negative 1, you take this area over here, okay? If the alternative has a greater than, okay, which is what we had in the last example, right? So we had the, uh, the alternative hypothesis, the last example was p is greater than 0.25, Okay, so if the alternative has a greater than sign, okay, our p-value is equal to the area to the right of z. Okay, all right, and then this is our last case. If the alternative has a not equal sign, okay, then our p-value is equal to two times our tail area. The tail area is the area um, that that goes farther away from the middle. Okay, that. That is the area uh, away from the middle. Okay, so if you have a negative z score and you get, um, you're going to take this, this side is the tail area, so if z is negative, this is the tail, and your p value is two times the tail. Okay, and over here, if you have a a positive z-score, this side is the tail. And then uh, and your p-value is equal to 2 times the tail. And that's if you have a not equal sign. Question? How would you tell by looking at the question if it's like increase or decrease? Yeah, yeah, and that's how we decide whether we have a greater than or a less than sign in the alternative. Okay. So if okay, so this is good good question. Okay, so uh, alternative has less than. So it'll say things like um, keywords in the question will be things like decreased is less whatever things like that. Okay, greater than keywords will be like increased is more bigger 
etc., higher, things like that, okay? And then not equal, this would be things like different, changed, not the same. So, so all of these, these kind of, these indicate change, but not more or less, okay? So in the questions, you'll, you'll have to kind of look at these words and see what, what it's talking about. Okay, I'm gonna pass out this attendance sheet. So, uh, <coughs> so write your name, fill out the numbers if there's not a number there. Yeah, question. Uh, it's just two is positive, right? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, tail. Z is positive, yeah. Z is positive, sorry. Yeah, no, the, my handwriting is just it's small here. Okay. Z is positive. Counting 48 of you, so I should have 48 signatures here. Yeah. <laughs> so P is two times the tail. Is, wait. Uh, it, sorry, what's your question? What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I didn't see where you were. Are you saying for the. So if you, have, if you have a not equal sign in the alternative hypothesis, okay, then your P value is two times the tail. Okay, that's that's so over here if we said p value is area to the left, over here it's area to the right, and if you have a not equal sign, it's two times the tail. So what is the tail? Well if z is negative, the tail is the area over here, the area to the left. You're gonna find that tail area, multiply it by two. Over here, if uh, z is positive, your tail area is over this way, your p value is gonna be two times the tail. Okay? It, it's just kind of like the rule for getting, going from a z-score to a p-value. Okay, so how do we go from a z-score to a p-value? This is what we do. Okay. So this is uh, so this is this, and now we're going to do um, our next section here. Okay. Yeah. Question. For that last scenario, no, no, no. We you, not the z-score times two. You go from the z-score to the tail area, and then the tail area times two. Okay. Z-score. You look it up in the table, and you get an area. Okay. And either you take the area to the left or the area to the right. Tail area multiplied by two. All right. Okay. Eight point four. Comparing two populations, comparing proportions for two populations. Okay, so this is something like, um, you know, we, we kind of ask questions like, um, in, back in chapter five, we said like, is this evidence that these two events are independent or, or, or dependent, right? And we said, you know, you might have some kind of table. Okay. And we said, maybe we have, uh, we have men we have women, we have uh, left-handed, and we'll have right-handed. Okay, so I know, just a simplified view, I know people can be ambidextrous and, you know, they not as, okay. Um, all right, let's say uh, we have 
15 men and uh, that are left-handed, 85 that are right-handed. We got 100 here, okay? And then, I don't know, 20 and... Hmm. 110. Okay. And so the question, and so this becomes, you know, 35 divided by 210 or something like that. All right. Is, uh, we want to do different proportions of men and women are, are how am I saying this? Okay. So back in chapter five, we would do something like, you know, is the proportion of left-handed males different from the proportion of left-handed females or left-handed women? Okay. And we would say, you know, we would do 15 divided by 100 and we'd say, okay, 15% of men are left-handed. And then if we did the math over here, we would get uh, 20 divided by 110. We'd get 18% of women are left-handed. Okay. And and what we said in chapter five was, oh, those proportions are different. That means they're dependent, right? We said something like that, okay? But does that feel like that's correct? Okay, in our sample, we do have different proportions. That's true. But if we looked at all the men in the world and we looked at all the women in the world, would we find a different proportion of left-handed men and left-handed women? Yes. Yes, no? Maybe. So, so here, what I'm saying is that when we do this question, the question is, okay, so here my p hat for the men, the p hat was 0.15, okay? And the p hat for the women, so I'm going to just write p hat for the women was 20 over 110. This is 0.1818, okay? So we're observing maybe like a three percentage point difference. The question is, is this three percentage point difference, could this have been a result of just the random sampling process? Or is this a result from the fact that there's a different proportion of left-handed women than there are left-handed men? Does, that, does this question make sense? No. Yes? Okay. If I took a survey, right, if I took a survey of a bunch of people, okay, and I just said, are you a man or are you a woman? Are you left-handed or are you right-handed? Okay, I'm going to get different answers, right? Okay, so let's say I surveyed 100 men and I surveyed 120 women, okay? In this survey, I got 15% of the men are left-handed and I got 18% of the women are left-handed, Okay. If I did this survey again, would I also get 15% left-handed males and 18% left-handed females? No, I'm not going to get exactly the same, right? I'm going to get things that are slightly different, okay? The question I'm asking is, in my survey, I got 15% left-handed men, 18% left-handed women, all right? So I have like a three percentage point difference between the number of left-handed men and the per, or a percentage of left-handed men and percentage of left-handed women, okay? Does this mean that in the entire world or whatever population I'm looking at, if I looked at all the men, would we have a different proportion of left-handed men than we do left-handed women? Or could the proportion of left-handed people be the same for both men and women and just from sampling I happen to get slightly different proportions. Okay, well, that's, that's your gut instinct, right? So you, but that's the question I'm asking. Does it mean that the populations have different proportions? Or could the populations have the same proportion, and just because of random sampling, I'm getting different numbers? That's the question I want to know the answer to, okay? So we have, we can't, you know, we have a gut instinct. We look at this and we say, well, I feel like they could be the same, okay? And we're probably right. But we, we, what we should do, and what this class is teaching you, is we're going to do some math, and the math will give us the answer by giving us a p-value that we compare, and we say, ah, yes, it's not that big of a deal.
or, oh, my p-value is small. This means I have evidence that there's a difference. Okay, that's what we're saying. So, yeah, we look at this and go, ah, oh, three percentage points, who cares about that? It's not that big of a deal. That's kind of our gut instinct, okay? And then, you know, we're asking things about left-handed things, and from our life experience, we're like, oh, it doesn't seem like men and women have are different proportions left-handed, right? But, you know, let's say I change these things, right? And I said, like, uh, you know, let's say there's some somebody did some study, right? And they said, oh, we looked at... Uh, I don't know, people, people with this kind of genetic, genetic disorder and people who are healthy and, and then we're looking at this other strange thing that may or may not be related, right? You know, do people, you know, that have this certain genome type, okay, maybe not even the disorder, but just have a certain genome and, you know, are they more likely to, um, I don't know, like bitter tasting foods or whatever, you know, you can, we can complicate these, right? So with men and women and left-handed, right-handed, like from our life experience, we feel like, ah, oh, these shouldn't be different, okay? But we could say like, oh, is the proportion of, I don't know, group one and group two, are they different if we did some other weird trait that we're not really familiar with? Well, this is where we're bringing the statistics here, okay? So does this make sense? Okay, this is what we're going for. So we're getting different proportions here, okay? So from our data, we see a different proportion of left-handed men. Uh, we see a different proportion of left-handed women, men, and uh, left-handed women. Okay. And so the question is, do the respective populations have different proportions or could they be the same? they okay so in this case here's the key we have two samples two samples and we're dealing with proportions so everything else we did today was dealing with one sample we were dealing with proportions okay next week we're going to look at means, okay? And it's a whole whole new set of procedures, okay? But the concept is still the same, okay? We're still following our four steps, our hypotheses, okay? And one nice thing, so all of the calculation step in this thing is, is a mess, all right? It's just ugly, and it, there's nothing we can do about it, all right? I'm just giving you a heads up. The calculation step is going to feel terrible, <laughs> But the concepts, if you fit it in that framework of kind of the four things that we're doing, it's not so bad. Okay, so our hypotheses, the null hypothesis is always going to be P1 equal to P2, okay? P1 meaning P of group one is equal to P of group two. In this case, it would be P men equal to P women, okay? Conversely, I mean, this could also be written the same way the exact same thing as saying um, P1 minus P2 equal to zero. So, you know, just from algebra, if you just subtract P2 from both sides, you can do this. So you, you might see the, can also be written this way. Okay, and then the alternative hypothesis will always be P1 is greater than P2 or P1 is less than P2, or P1 is not equal to P2, okay? Or conversely, P1 minus P2 is greater than zero, less than zero, or not equal to zero, okay? Okay, so this is our hypotheses. I'm going to uh, go ahead 
and I'm going to copy this stuff onto the next slide. Hang in there, you guys. So only a few more weeks left of our class. All right. So it'll be the last few weeks I get to see you guys. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, step two, you know, preparation, right? So nothing was stated, so we're going to assume alpha is 5%. Okay. Here are the pieces you need. Okay. You need to know um, which is sample one. And you have to label what sample two is. And then, so in our case, we're going to call sample one men and sample two women. Um, it's arbitrary, maybe because of uh, you know, whatever <laughs> societal bias. Um, all right. And then you got to figure out uh, N1, N2. X1 and X2, Th these may or may not appear, and you'll have P hat 1 and P hat 2, okay? All right, so from our data, what's N1 for the men? 100. Uh, X1, how many are left-handed? 15, and so our P hat would be 0.15. 15 divided by 100, right? Write that out. 15 over 100 is 0.15. Okay, N2, 110, 20, 20 over 110, 0.1818. It's okay? All right, so step three. Once you've labeled all of these things, okay, this will make step three a lot more nav manageable, okay? But there's just a whole bunch of things you got to worry about. Not worry about. Just follow the directions, you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, this is what we do. First, we got to find something called p hat. Okay, this is not p hat one. This is not p hat two. It's the overall p hat. Okay, but it just shows up as p hat. This is x one plus x two divided by n1 plus n2. All right, so this is going to be 15 plus 20 divided by 100 plus 110. So I get 35 over 210, and I get, I don't know what that is, 0 0.16667. Okay. Step three. All right. So I guess maybe I'll, uh, okay. Then we get our standard error. This is the square root of p hat. So you've got to figure out your p hat in the previous step times one minus p hat over times one over n1 plus one over n2. Okay. It's not so bad. This is about as ugly as it gets. <laughs> Are we okay? So I'm going to just plug in the values that we got. So my p hat, we've established p hat to be 0.1667 in the previous step, right? So it's going to be 0.1667 times 1 minus 0.1667 times 1 over what's n1? 100, great, okay, plus 1 over what? 110, okay? And you just punch this into your calculator, all right? Do you want me to, you want to see me do this on the calculator? All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just type this out. 0.1667 times parentheses 1 minus 0.1667 close parentheses, times parentheses. I guess I, I can put a little multiplication signs, but 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 110. 
close parentheses. I'm going to hit equals, and I get this. And then what do I do? I take the square root of that number. Would you be able to do it all in code? Yeah, you can do that also. You're just going to have to throw in some more parentheses. But yeah, totally fine. I Just out of habit, I split it up into two things, but you don't have to. Okay, so I get this to be point zero five one four nine seven. So uh, I can just call it point zero five one five. Okay. All right. So our Z score is going to be P hat one minus P hat two divided by our standard error. Okay. So what I have here is what do, what do I put? What's P hat one? 0.15 minus what's P hat two? 0.1818. And what's my standard error? 0.0515. Okay. So that's what I do. 0.15 minus 0.18. Uh, so it's probably a good idea to put this in parentheses. Okay. And then divided by the answer, I get negative 0.58. Z is equal to negative 0 0.58. Yes, question. So how do you know which one N1 is, which one X1 is, which one X2 is? It doesn't matter. You just got to call one of these samples men, or not one, men, <laughs> you got to just call one of these sample one and the other sample two, and then you just label, okay, this is going to be N1, this is X1 and P1, P hat 1. Yeah, if you, if you can't... You can't say 100 and then put in the 20 over here, okay? You just have to, you have to, like if, if these were all, if this we called sample 2 and this we called sample 1, that's also fine. Because if you look at this, kind of the order doesn't really matter. I could have put X2 over here and X1 over here. Like, No, no. We uh, so n. What what does n symbolize? N is always our sample size, right? right? So when I look at this table, how many men did I survey? A hundred. Okay. X is how many left-handed people? Okay, or whatever trait it is that you're looking at, right? People with the trait. And so in our case, we're looking at. All right, and then p hat is our sample proportion, which is always going to be, right? It could be like we're looking at M&M candies versus uh, whatever. What it, what's, is there a com competitor to M&Ms? <laughs> Skittles, okay. And we're like, oh, I really have an obsession with red candy, okay? And we're like, oh, what proportion of M&Ms are red and what proportion of Skittles are red, okay? Does it matter? I don't know, okay? No, that question doesn't <laughs> matter, but, um, you know, this is, this is what we're going for. Okay, so we've got this. We got our z-score, all right? So we want to go from a z-score. So z is equal to negative 0.58, all right? Let's say our null hypothesis was P1 equal to P2, meaning that these uh, men and women have the same proportion of left-handed people. This time... Yes. After, after you write this, um, 0.15 minus 0.1818 divided by 0 0.5, I mean 0 0.0515. Yes. And you got that answer. You look that up in the we're, Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Oh. Okay. So my Z is negative 0.58. Okay. And that's, you got that from that. that yeah, I, that's from this mathematical operation here. So we're going so from... Z value, Z score to P value right yes, now? right now we're going to go from a Z score to a P value. But when I did it in my calculator, you and did, I, I plugged in the same numbers, I'm getting 0 0.61747. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. okay. Let me let me just check. Okay. 0.15 minus 0.1818 divided by 0.0515. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's true. Um, so probably because I've done some rounding, I'm getting something different here. Okay. So your answer might be slightly different because of rounding. Okay, so perhaps uh, your z-score ends up being uh, negative 0.617, okay? So here we get negative 0.62. So you, after you solve that, you use the, the number that's in the calculator, you use that and look it up? Yeah, yeah, so what I'm doing, you know, the reason why my numbers are coming out different is because I've, I didn't do any rounding, okay? I, I'm using the answer button, but here, you know, for the sake of writing it on the screen, I've, I've done some rounding. So. I mean, these are pretty close, but they, they are different. Okay, so uh, anyway, this shouldn't change our answer, all right? So, you know, your z is equal to negative 0.58, or your z is equal to negative 0.62, whatever. Okay, p is a not, um, our alternative has a not equal sign. So what do we do? This is, we're going to have a, this is a two-tail test. And so we're going to look up. Negative 0.62, and so my tail area is what? The area to the left or the area to the right? To the left, okay? So my tail area is going to be over here. So what is my tail area equal to? 0.2810, is that what we got? Negative point... Okay, negative 0.58 or negative 0.62, you know, we're getting something like 27, 28%. Okay, so 28... 0.2810, okay? So 27%, 28%, something like that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our tail area and multiply it by 2. Tail times 2 is going to be 0.2810 times 2, 0.2810 times 2, 56.56. So like 56%, if you looked up 0.62, you get 27%, so you get... 54% or something like that. Okay, so my p-value is equal to 0.562. All right, so part four is we compare our p-value versus alpha. So if, let's assume alpha is 0 0.05. My p-value is what? It's way bigger than alpha, okay? So my p-value is way bigger than alpha. So what, do, what does that mean? Reject or no reject? I like I like how you guys say something and then I look at you and then you change your answer. Um, but yeah, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. What does it mean that we do not reject the null hypothesis? What did our null hypothesis state? Yeah, so the null hypothesis said that the proportion of left-handed men is the same as the proportion of left-handed women. And what we're saying is that, look, you looked at 210 people, we have no evidence that the proportions are different, okay? So uh, we do not have evidence that the proportions of left-handed people are different from men and women. Is the uh, attendance sheet floating around somewhere? Where is it? You got it? Have, has everyone signed it? No. no. Okay. Well, be sure you sign it before you leave. So we do not have evidence that the proportions of left-handed people are different for men and women. So please uh, study all of this stuff. So next week you'll have a quiz on, on this stuff, and you'll have to identify the uh, 
hypotheses and the standard error and the test statistic and all of that, okay? Yes, you are allowed to have a note card, okay? And then next week, uh, you'll have a little bit of extra time. It'll be, I'll give you guys 40 minutes for the quiz, okay?